Okay. Uh, hi, Paul. So say hi to the BTT and Zine audience. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> nice to be here on, on your show. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. Nice. Thanks, man. So, uh, Paul, let's start with uh, just, um, just, yeah, just introduce yeah. yourself and just explain just to, as a way to let people know what you do. Um, yeah. Um, I am a uh, freelance painter. I never really like to call myself artist because I, because in school, it always felt like that was a pretentious title people gave themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, 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 since moving to Thailand, I guess before I've been doing commissions, and so a lot of the stuff that I that I have produced here I end up sending to Canada or U.S. mostly. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I paint with acrylic ink most of the time. Uh, I used to use a lot of gouache and and whatnot, but then. Uh, I realized that the pro there are pros and cons to gouache, and I ended up just focusing on the cons <laughs> and <laughs> migrated to acrylic paint. Yeah, because I, I I used a lot of acrylic paint in school, and then I don't know, I got influenced too much with Alex Ross and, and went to gouache, and then I've I've gone back to what I've mm. been familiar with before. Yeah, is it? Um, I'm I'm a I'm a dummy when it comes to painting, so. Uh, I understand that in there's acrylic paint and acrylic ink, right? Yeah. So ink is like dense or more. Uh... Uh, yeah, well, it's more. It's like ink, like liquid, but uh... so you can do like more diluted washes and exactly, like yeah, yeah. But it's not like yeah, you can dilute it as much as you want. But obviously, if you want something heavier, you have to use like actual heavy body acrylic paint type of stuff, like actual like thick. Kind of, kind of stuff, but then this you can it comes with an eyedropper, mm -hmm. so you can. I think it's mainly used for um, airbrushing, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, but then you can use it with washes and stuff, mm -hmm. so that, that's really handy. Okay. Yeah. So, so that that's your um, is is that the one you're comfortable with? Like, or, I mean, is that? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, it's the one I, I'm, I'm most familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, there. Each medium has its own limit, right? Like, well, oh, strength yeah. and so, so like yeah. each medium has its strengths. Yeah, yeah, like there are things that I wish I could do with with acrylic that I could do with gouache, but you obviously can't. Yeah, right. It's like watercolor; you can reactivate it with with water. Yeah. But then there are some things that, you know, if I'm painting with gouache, I don't want it to be reactivated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm using acrylic, like with I'm using acrylic paint. Oh, right. yeah. So um, yeah, I, th I think we went like uh, that. That's great. Uh, I think yeah. I, I I don't want to control it too much, but yeah. Um, like yeah, I think I usually ask people like how they found out like yeah. um, what they do. Um, I mean, seemingly yeah. I hope you like what you do. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. Enjoying, yeah. Seems like you're enjoying what you do. Yeah. So um, like I don't know. Was there a moment when you decide like how did you decide to become like to do something related anything related to art? Right? Um. Uh, I think it, it's, it definitely, I definitely really started to consider it since high school. Um, I think, I don't know if it was like directly f from there. I think it was a gradual thing, but I recall, you know, in high school, not liking exams. I wasn't very uh, good academically. Right. And in high school, we had like eight, eight, eight at the most, we would have like eight exams uh, at a time. And you know, I the amount of time that I spent studying, I could easily double that amount of time uh, doing art, right, without any stress. So I'm like, okay, I obviously don't want to study because I don't really care, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, and but like, like I could do like four hours of studying or eight hours of working on my project, mm. right? And the one that came more naturally, it was, it was, it was a no brainer. So, um, uh, when it came to like my average, my grade point average in high school was always brought up because of my art, art, uh, art marks. Oh, like okay. I, I, I was interested in science and stuff, but I wasn't good at it. Hmm. I had there, I had, a uh, art, uh, no, I had a interest in taking this computer animation course in high school, which I guess is like, it was very very basic at the time but i guess state of the art kind of at the time i don't know what other high schools were like but um 
that class was full, so mm. I couldn't take it. I'm like, okay, I'll take physics because I feel like physics is might have some sort of benefit when it came to what I wanted to do, which at the time was more computer animation. And I found out one of my friends, she was in the com computer animation course, but she wanted to take the physics class that I was in, which was full. And so we both <laughs> went to the, the guidance counselor and we asked, asked them to switch it. I'm like, awesome. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I, I think, I don't know, we're, I think we're around the same age. And yeah, yeah we are. Yeah. And we both grew up at like the DVD bonus features era, yeah. <laughs> basically. So you see all this behind the stuff, uh, behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, it's like, okay, the concept art that they do for, for yeah. this movie and, you know, the visual effects that they do for mm -hmm. these movies, like, especially Lord of the Rings, the yeah. extended edition, right? Yeah. Two discs of each <laughs> for each movie, right? And so I'm like, my interest was, or my dream at the time was, I want to design a concept for a character or creature mm -hmm. or something like that and then animate it myself for mm. the movie. And so that, that would be like, looking back at it now, it would have been like 20 different jobs, right? But I, at the end, I wanted to do computer animation. That's, that, was, that was the main goal. And there, the school that I uh, was aspiring to go to uh, was like one of the best in the world. Like a lot of people uh, graduate from there and go to, I don't know, ILM or mm. like Pixar and stuff, right? Um, what's, what's the name? Uh, Sheridan College. Yeah. And, um, but to go, go there, I needed a degree. It was like post-grad, right? So I took a degree in, or I got a degree in fine art, and then I got into Sheridan. But then I realized I didn't get any jobs after, after Sheridan mm. uh, for several reasons, but I feel like one of the, one of the, strongest reasons was it was 2008 <laughs> i think that every everybody like every industry was affected in 2008 because of the crash yeah um and so uh i ended up falling back on what i actually liked doing mm -hmm. also was like doing artwork and stuff mm -hmm. for comics so i was interested in doing something with movies also but um yeah so it started off in high school and gradually uh turned into like an actual pursuit of doing stuff in movies and then uh yeah long story short that's that's what it is <laughs> yeah sorry yeah. but no but like is is there um have you tried to like actually apply to companies oh yeah yeah there fortunately in toronto you know it's kind of like uh between toronto and vancouver i feel like the movie industry is shared between those two and there are a lot of visual effects places, not only for movies, for like TV and commercial. So there was a lot, but I didn't have a good enough portfolio for them, I don't think. That's that's what I think. I don't think my portfolio was good enough because it wasn't focused. Because you had to specialize in something. Mm. And I wanted to do everything. <laughs> and, you know, it, like they had one guy for weapons. and then one. Yeah, or like one animator or something mm. like that. One of my teachers was telling me that they had... In episode three of Star Wars, when Count Dooku flips over a railing and then he takes his lightsaber out, <laughs> yeah. right? They, like, cloth simulation wasn't that good at the time, I assume. And he was telling me that it took three animators to mm. animate a cape. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to animate a cape. Yeah, <laughs> right? Right? Right. yeah. <laughs> like, that's boring. I want to do this other stuff. And then um, I was introduced to... Like, I knew about rotoscoping. Do you know what rotoscoping yeah, is? Yeah. yeah. And so for, for those who don't know rotoscoping, is basically you go over. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. The it, it's it's yeah. tracing out tracing parts, parts of a character so that you can, like, put the background mm -hmm. or whatever, right? And uh, I knew about that, but I didn't know that that was, like, somebody's actual job. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. that, that's boring. <laughs> I want to do that. So I guess that kind of translates to or influenced why I do like paintings and stuff when it comes to comic books, because mm -hmm. I'm doing all of it. Right? I, I'm doing from like penciling to, I don't know, inking and coloring, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I didn't want to be one of three cape animators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. So the, I, so you mostly um, like paint, let's say, let's say super, superheroes, but I mean, yeah. I don't know, from what I've seen, or at least yeah. that's, that's what you call it, it's mostly villains, I mean, from that, like, superhero universe, yeah. whether it's... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
So you mentioned Alex Cross, like, so yeah. what is it about the comic book part of the, that, uh, that, that world? Uh, that world? Yeah, well, I, I, I think that, you know, when every, when people grow up or get interested in artwork, their kind of, their taste is kind of formed by other people. It's like, this is good, this mm -hmm. is bad, this is good, this is bad. And, you know, uh, in high school, we had uh, art history section you know, Renaissance art was always like, this is good, mm, right? Mm. And like, and you know, we're just gonna like blow by cubism, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? And, and so um, one of my uh, aspirations was like to draw something realistic that was, that mm. was fictional, mm -hmm. right? And then um, actually one of my friends that was really into comic books uh, in high school, more so than I was, um introduced show me a painting by alex ross mm. but i didn't really think much of it because i thought i think i thought it was a photo or something like that i don't know what it was then afterwards uh one of my cousins told me about kingdom come mm. and he's like read this I'm like okay so i read it like holy crap this is exactly what i was trying to do and then you know after looking at it more i'm like okay he's he's doing uh he's doing so much with not that much effort it's not like he has like a lot of detail in his stuff mm -hmm. right he is sometimes it looks like he has one stroke and it's a cape mm -hmm. or whatever it's like or five strokes and it's a whole face like one of my favorite paintings of his is uh maybe you've seen a portrait of the joker it's straight on he's like like this and it's black yeah, background. Right, yeah. and i'm like there's not that much paint on this like because well, joker's face is white the, uh, isn't that the version i mean I, is that the I thought that was the close-up because when I, whenever I see uh, that image, yeah. I, th I thought that was the close-up of the image where he's holding holding you know, Harley Quinn. Harley no, I think it's a different one oh, because there's one? there's there even though there isn't much detail, I think because it's a close-up, yeah. there is more detail. You can see the yeah. size yeah. of the brush and stuff like that more. So I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it's a different painting. But but at the same time, like you see these things because you you yeah. know, you, you do you create that right? Like, I mean, yeah. So, Maybe for the for the <laughs> the, the the normal person, yeah. uh, maybe they just see like the whole. Uh, well, right, yeah, but th that's I think that's you know you know you know this because you draw also. It's like you look at somebody's thing, somebody's artwork, and I don't know which comes first: the appreciation for the final image or the appreciation for the technique. Right, mm. it's kind of like looking at a, like a magician seeing a magician's magic trick. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that was awesome. How did, how did you do that? Or I like what you did there because I never seen. I think it it's a little bit. I mean, you, you're first hit with the encounter, like the, the yeah, the uh, yeah, the, and then because you want to do that, and so it's like this is the way I see that. I, I think I started creating art because I was kind of jealous. I mean, yeah, that the of the effect that all the whether it's filmmaker or stand up comedians or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, uh, painters and comic book artists. The, the, the effect that they were having on me and I sort of wanted that to do that on yeah. you for others right right yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and then you try to figure out like oh how do you do that and then you <laughs> you put your nose close to the you know, yeah yeah uh, and, and try to figure out like uh, of course now it's easier because you have like high resolution scans and so on but right uh, yeah and, uh, you know, yeah like I saw this article about Jim Lee and how his originals don't look exactly like the new the, yeah. the printed ones because yeah. i think it was like the scanner or whatever the technology wasn't up for it maybe mm -hmm. it was the printer i think but yeah you could see a little more details in the hat and the cross hatching and yeah. whatever in the originals then but oh, that's the thing like yeah. there's also the reproduction quality was i mean I yeah think it still sucks i think but because yeah. a lot of details get lost and yeah and and color is difficult to get <laughs> yeah. for some reason whenever whenever i try to digitize my paintings and i use like turquoise or teal something about that blue green combination mm. it doesn't work out mm. i don't know i don't know why but uh yeah um i can't even remember what the whole question was but <laughs> no, the question was like so, so like uh, was there like you know we talked about alex cross and yeah like the uh like how someone influenced you so you were talking about like yeah uh, our our art is actually influenced by what we enjoy like, in, like yeah art. yeah so yeah like, I, I can i can yeah i can i can, I can see that so yeah. um and like so uh, 
so you just decided so it feels like you are like a kind of artist that kind of likes to have that control or do everything because yeah like you said and and maybe that's part of the reason why you chose to be yeah, a I freelancer mean, rather than I'm sure there's like a psychologist or psychiatrist watching this <laughs> like how many siblings does he have <laughs> what's his parental situation <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like I because um I can't I, I something that I can't wrap my head around mm -hmm. sometimes like uh, but I, I'll accept is how uh, a lot of people in comics are fine with just doing the pencils mm. right and i'm like but you're it's not finished how do you how do, yeah, you, how do yeah. you deal with that <laughs> right or even like and are these things uh, i would i would go at least like uh, yeah. yeah like there's that whole black and white aspect but i mean in terms of like when you're actually looking at it from a pipeline point of view like it versus just a sketch right yeah. a sketch is finished when you're done sketching it obviously you can take it further but then when it comes to like comic book work or whatever i'm like you're not do you do you, i guess you feel like you're done <laughs> but to me i'm like but there's so much more potential that you can have in this thing but i mean i get i obviously when you you add inks you lose something in the pencils or you add color yeah. you lose something in the inks and the pencils yeah. right but i don't know to me i'm like i guess when i'm painting something or trying to make an image i i'm going in my head with like okay this Th these pencils i'm shading it this way and these these shadows are going to be this color and mm. whatever and i'm thinking all the way through and then and I'm like okay i'm going to paint it with this so that i can varnish it <laughs> right? yeah and, and um so you know people watching this might there might be people who want to become freelancer like do you yeah. remember like how, how did you how did you get started how did you get your first gig and um i think my first gig was painting uh what were they i think they were they were concepts for a <laughs> somewhere in africa this is years ago it's paintings for like buildings that were going to be built in africa and it was for a documentary oh right yeah. and i got this because somebody posted something at my school's job board right <laughs> yeah and so, uh, as as a freelancer, you know, job boards were my best friend, right? And that included like Craigslist, mm -hmm. and then I don't know if some of these are still still around. Like Freelance was another one. Uh, well, now uh, there's Freelance uh, Freelance.com, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So that that's still around. Mm -hmm. There was a movie industry one called Mandy.com, uh -huh. and then Upwork, which I haven't used in a while, but for some reason I got an email recently that <laughs> that said. My proposal was rejected, but I'm like, that's the last time I did <laughs> that. But um, yeah, I feel like the, the best way uh, to do that outside of just job boards, whichever, wherever you are in the world, is to do networking, to actually see somebody in person, though. Because mm -hmm. what I've noticed is that when I see people in person, where, where, whether it's at like some sort of comic book store or a, uh, a comic convention, people will see me then we'll start talking and they'll be like oh yeah i have this project coming up are you available to do this mm. right versus like even like it ha i feel like it has to be in person yeah. because when you do even when you do it on uh online it's different i've noticed um because yeah like I'll, I'll i've done a few covers for uh this store owner in toronto right and uh i haven't i hadn't seen him in two years since i moved here mm. and then i go back and he's like, are you free, are you feeling free to do this other thing? Like, yeah. oh yeah. I mean, you could have emailed me, but then I guess because I'm there, it, it it's in his head already and yeah. he can talk to me more easily. So yeah. yeah, I think networking is the best way. And um also sometimes you gotta push push the networking thing. It feel to me like being a salesman felt dirty. Like when I was doing retail, <laughs> it was it it felt like dishonest a bit mm. but then i guess some people will have a better a, a better look at it like it doesn't have to you don't have to feel dishonest about it you're it almost it's almost like a mutual understanding mm. like if if someone came to me looking for like yeah i get it <laughs> right not like i have any work to offer anybody but like 
like, I'm like, yeah, uh, no, I totally understand. Let's see if I have any projects so that you can like participate in, right? Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about like a little bit about like just um, so you mentioned the comic book store. So yeah. you said that you, you did. I mean, you did grow up reading comics, right? And, um, or I mean, I grew up having read a few, but the but you were not like a Wednesday warrior or like <laughs> no no like like, fol like no. following see like runs. Or... Yeah, I didn't really know that much. My 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 gateway was my brother-in-law gave me a bunch of cards mm. like collector cards right and so that was the thing i have like two binders of cards from 1999 i think it's no 1991 at the earliest okay right and they're not i don't even think it's a complete set but i have i have i think there's like usually 200 mm. cards in a set so like I'll, I'll like flip it and there's like two missing right because it's it's three by three it's nine mm. cards in one one sleeve and so I'll have, I'll have a few missing and, all and but yeah on the back they'll have like origin stories or mm. stories from like the comic and it would say like i don't know captain britain in excalibur number 51 or whatever number it was and so i'm like i see that like, does that mean if i want to like catch up on captain britain i have to start from number one <laughs> <laughs> i have to read 51 comics and this is from 1991 yeah so so I that that was my impression of comic books where it's like you have to start from number one yeah right and so I never really mm -hmm. I never really did that yeah so let's talk about the things that uh, you grew up like enjoying so yeah uh, comics so you talked about the yeah I mean I grew up in the 90s so while I was looking at cards and comics there was also cartoons right so uh obviously batman the animated series and you know you you know about this and also Naruto. what Naruto denies is uh x-men the animated series right <laughs> <laughs> which i actually started re-watching because i was doing a, that wolverine painting so like let's let's be festive <laughs> you know paint this all this is going on and um also with that came also uh, Spider-Man cartoon and then uh, this with the um, I, I never remember the adjective but is was it like like uh, nostalgic or no 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 I mean, the, I mean because Spider-Man has like spectacular Spider-Man there's amazing Spider-Man oh. there's like you know there's always an adjective before like, Spider yeah so, I I don't know if uh, this one had anything in front of it I think it was just Spider-Man I think it was just Spider-Man yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was that one. And the benefit of, of those two is that they were actually, from what I understand, very close to like their comic book stories. Mm. Whereas with any other thing like X-Men Evolution, I think is what it's mm. called, and then Spectacular Spider-Man and anything else, they kind of took liberties and did their own thing, right? So I don't, I, I, I wonder what other kids think when they, when they watch those shows mm -hmm. and realize it's nothing like the comic books, especially like kids that watch Teen Titans. Like, <laughs> I don't think that's anything like <laughs> the source material. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's a different crowd. They're, yeah. They're, they're, their target is a different crowd. Yeah. yeah. But in that, in that respect, Batman the Animated Series wasn't like the comic books either, right? Yeah. 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 But the stories were so good anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, I think they went, they, like, I feel like I watched them too, too young because a lot of it went over my head. Mm. Like, sometimes I'll watch other cartoons that I watch, like Tiny Toons, for example. Yeah. And, um, and I watched it again recently, not recently, but like a couple of years ago. I was like, what? Let me just watch an episode of this. And I'm like, oh, there's so much, like, morality. Yeah. And these that went over my head. Like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, first, I, didn't know yeah, I remember that. the first, first thing that, uh, like, Pop was the, yeah the, 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 the visuals like the yeah the, I've never seen a show animated like that like yeah and that, with those cut tones and yeah those colors and the way Batman yeah. moved and it, it, yeah it was like, I mean I, I think it was um, because I think uh, the they outsourced it to Korean companies I think for the, for the animation probably think, yeah so there was a there was an anime like kind of uh, kind of like look, dynamism yeah. to, to it so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, and then, 
uh, I think X Men they outsource some of the animation to like a Filipino company, mm. and I'm gonna say that I think on the fifth season they did that to the Filipino company, and the animation was really really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, it might have been the opposite, but I'm just gonna be polite to the other country and say I, that. I have Philippines. to say um, for the X Men, um, I think I, I I'm I'm not. I've only watched a few episodes, and oh yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I would just watch it because there's just something to watch, like I, like yeah, has cool characters and costumes. But yeah, I was, you know, I, I never followed a storyline or something. Oh you know, so. no, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I can I can ask you about it, but like I was always more connected for some reason to DC characters. Oh than, yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's just my personality. I like myths, and I feel like DC characters are more mythical. But then. The yeah, Marvel yeah. characters I think are more maybe uh, I don't want to say real, but like they're they... like well, especially with X Men, they're more social commentary, mm. right? Because I, I which I never really thought of when yeah. I was a kid. I'm like, okay, these people just hate mutants. mutants. <laughs> like, okay, but yeah, with yeah, you're you're definitely right. They're they're more mythical, I think, with DC. I I I even though like probably being my favorite character is Batman, I wasn't much of a DC guy. Um, and that might just be because my brother-in-law gave me Marvel cards and not DC cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, like, I, there are a lot of characters that I know about in DC, but I don't know their origins, really. Any of, any of that, any of that education of their history, I think, comes from, like, the cartoons mm -hmm. for, for DC. But then for Marvel, like, you know, I'm reading, looking at the cards and then, but most of my most of my commission requests are also Marvel, also. Okay. Yeah, which is interesting. Like I, I think I've gotten like one Superman, maybe two, Superman <laughs> requests. But uh, I got a Wonder Woman request, but that was only because of the movie. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, take us through um, like a typical process, like um, like. Yeah. So, yeah. do you um, so the customer gives you uh, like a an image like it describes the image? Um, the the simplest version is they want no even simpler. It would be like I want a I want a I have a I want a commission. Is there any character that you've been meaning to paint? Oh, then I'll say this character. And then I'll sketch out the character and, and then they'll give me the thumbs up. Or in some cases, this one guy didn't want to see anything. They just wanted to uh, have me paint it and then send it to him. And I'm like, okay, oh. yeah. So that is, that is the, I don't know, it's not necessarily the bait. That's the one with the least amount of steps. But then the most amount of steps is somebody wants something specific. You'd be like, I want this character, and uh, like for example, this isn't that specific compared to other ones, but then Psylocke at night with a lot of Japanese stuff, at, mm. and uh, it's snowing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in this case, he sent me a couple of things that actually piqued his interest in terms of this criteria. Like, so he sent me like drawings of uh, drawings by Mark Brooks, and I can't remember mm. who else, and then like a, a sculpture or two. And like okay, I get it. So you kind of get the feel, and um, the process. My, my process is uh, I, I learned from I guess experience because I realized that surprises aren't good sometimes, <laughs> except for that first example, because uh, I feel like maybe my taste isn't exactly their taste because sometimes they'll they'll want a painting mm -hmm. based on somebody else's painting. Mm -hmm and I'm cheaper, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think that's what it is. But, um, so I, I find that the, the best way for me is to show them my process work in as many steps as I can um, before they, so that I don't have to erase. Yeah. They're like, oh, okay, I like that, but can you change the face? Or can you add this? Or can you like, remove this thing? Um, because I, I, I have had to do that sometimes, like, oh, okay, I should have shown him this this yeah. step before, right? So, uh, so now, like, I, 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 show, I show the guy this, this stage, 
because after this it's going to be hard to erase mm. right because i'm gonna i'm gonna stretch this and then when and spray it so when i spray it the, it's hard to erase and then even after i like soak into water it's even harder to erase because the pencil becomes a stain instead mm. of just dust on paper yeah um yeah so then yeah it's like i show several pencil stages several painting stages and then after that varnish it mm, scan it ship it mm, done so we'll yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll try to if you can find the footage, we can show you packing. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The packing. I I don't know why, but I feel like if I wasn't painting anymore, I would be focused on packaging exclusively. <laughs> like I'll go, I'll look at a menu, a menu here, and they're like leather bound and stuff. Like wow, this is interesting. How they do that kind of stitching, right? Because I remember seeing a um, a TED talk by J J Abrams. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how he loves the design of Mac MacBooks, right? Mm -hmm. And like he would he he would like open it up and he would he would have to like start writing a script or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "What can I write that's worthy of this?" <laughs> right? <laughs> like, and so like even when you open up the packaging of a MacBook or any other thing, like technology nowadays, right? You, you look at the packaging and the box is like so amazing, so crisp mm -hmm. and like, you know, there's actual thought and it's, and it's like presentation, right? So that's what I'm trying to do sometimes. It's like, okay, I'm trying to like present this to somebody because yeah. there are some people that I've seen like send, commi send commissions in like an Amazon box, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, if it was me receiving a painting that I spent like a lot of money on, then I'd be like, I don't want it in an Amazon box. I've sent a painting before in in corrugated cardboard that I actually bought specifically for shipping. Mm -hmm. But I learned that corrugated cardboard isn't good because when I shipped my painting to this guy, he received it and there was puncture through it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, so so like that scarred me. <laughs> and so I'm like using board, really hard board now. I used to use like, uh, this type of board to to ship with, like this this hard like particle board. Yeah. Uh, you can see, yeah, this this board, and it, it's like pretty much wood, but then it's heavy, mm -hmm. so I, I stopped doing that. Um, uh, and but the benefit with that is because it's heavy, it's also it's also waterproof, and you can like seal it with duct tape. But then you you know the heavier it is, the more expensive it is to ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to ship from here to to Canada is not something I would want to pay for. It's a lot, right? So I tried to like save them as much money as possible. So you yeah. mentioned the like the, the menu and like the, the, the kind of a book kind of book like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you? Do you have an art book, or are you thinking of putting together an art book of your paintings? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I've, I have thought about it, but um, but. I don't know, we're all our worst, our own worst critics, right? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, this isn't good. This isn't good. This is okay. But then the thing I did in a few a few years ago was better. So I feel like this shouldn't go because I'm not including that other thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my stuff is is like you know licensed Marvel and DC stuff. So I'm like, am I allowed to make a book of this <laughs> stuff oh, and sell good. it? I don't know. Good question, but uh, yeah. Like, uh... But I've seen other artists have done it, but they probably have contacts with Marvel and DC. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, there are other things that I have, like, sketches and other unlicensed stuff that I can use. But I feel like, because so much of my life has been painting these, mm -hmm. these like, licensed characters, that if I don't include it, I don't think it'd be genuinely me or my book, right? So, yeah. is, is there a character that you've painted more than others like is there a popular request um no they're always a mixed bag and a lot of times i have to like google them or like mm. i'll work on a previous thing while watching youtube videos of this next one mm. like oh, okay that's that's who this who, who this character is related to mm. or whatever and it's also because i'm trying to i like attempting to put some sort of narrative in my paintings mm -hmm. also yeah. it's not just a lot of people and i think it's just to save them time they'll just do a, a generic pose yeah right and they 
background if they're feeling ambitious, maybe, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think because I'm not at that stage yet where I have like a deadline to do 20 comic books, <laughs> like yeah. unlike these other like big two professionals, I, I think I, I can take my time doing those. But yeah, when it comes to a certain character, like I would, I would think that I would have a lot of Batman or Wolverine or something, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty diverse. Mm. Like, I can't remember the last time I painted Psylocke. Last one before mm. this was Typhoid Mary, which I've never <laughs> drawn before. Yeah. And before that was... You told me about that, yeah. Yeah, I did Wolverine and Sabretooth. Yeah. But I... The last time I painted Wolverine was just for my for a charity thing where I could just decide who to paint. Mm. But yeah, before that commission... Yeah, I had a Wolverine painting uh, commission before that, but then that was pretty rare. So yeah, it's all over the place. I'm sure if I was, if I was faster, I would be able to tell you like, oh yeah, this year I did so many more paintings and I could tell you that I did five of this one character, but I don't paint that fast. Yeah. Have you, um, have you had any art blocks or period, period where you couldn't like, I don't know, I, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, <laughs> Like we were talking to a couple of people last time we were at dinner yeah. and they were talking about art blocks. And I think because this uh, this is my main source of income, mm. I, d I couldn't afford to have an art block, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, and I guess because of the way that I work, I'm sketching everything. So it's almost like the previous step is informed by, or the, the step that I'm on is informed by the previous step, right? So I have to, I'll, I'll sketch something and that's the hardest part I think to get over an art block. Right, but if I'm if I'm doing the final pencils for this, I can refer to my sketch, hmm. right? And um, uh, so, when it comes to art blocks, I'll have to like pump out a sketch as quickly as possible. In school, I had uh, I I took this one photography course by accident. <laughs> I actually took one class, and there were multiple. I'm not gonna say it's not my fault, but there was one course. That where there were the, there was this group of courses that were that all had the same name, but then the subtitle of these courses was like photography or drawing or whatever, mm -hmm. and I didn't notice that, so I accidentally took the photography course, and I'm like, okay, so I I only took one class though, and uh, that one class that we didn't have any assignments, so that it was more mostly just orientation, and then here's your project or here's your assignment, and I went. I went to the class the next day, the second day, uh, and uh, I didn't make it very far into the second class because I'm like, okay, this is not for me. I'm obviously not supposed to be here. But what the teacher asked is, is there anybody that has started on a project yet? Because it wasn't due for, I don't know, a month or a few weeks anyway. And he said, oh, I just want to see if, the, any, if there were any keeners out there because it's best to start your project when you're most inspired to do it not like leave it to the last minute and I feel like that has uh kind of informed me informed some of my process too to well, at, avoid at least, art at least you got that nugget of information yeah <laughs> like I don't know some people will say art school is a waste of time including sometimes I'll say that myself but there are there are little nuggets that I remember that are really good yeah well yeah. um just two more questions and then I think we can end the interview yeah yeah so yeah. Uh, first one is, um, are you an artist who has a routine or you're not like... No, I, I've tried doing like, okay, from this hour to this hour I'll paint, but it doesn't work because when I'm done, then, because if it was nine to five, after five o'clock I'll be like, okay, I feel like I need to continue doing mm. this. Like, it, wherever I am, I'm always like, okay, I could be working on this other thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have... I don't have a like a set routine. Like mm. some like sometimes I'll wake up early and like, oh, I've already finished this thing. It's only eight o'clock, <laughs> right? It's only eight a.m. But other times I'll uh, I don't know if I'll have a late night of working and then I'll I'll wake up like it's already ten o'clock, mm. <laughs> right? So there's no there's no set routine. I think there are other people that that do. And kudos to them, but I, not for me. And um, yeah, so what what are your plans for the future like do you want to do like for example yeah. you you talked about maybe you want to do more sequentials or i mean do you i i, I feel like a lot of uh comic book people like me like have ambitions to work with like the big two it's mm. like some sort of like validation or something like that i don't know what it is i think we're all 
I think, um, I don't know. I, right now, that that is the goal to be good enough for mm. them. But uh, we'll see. I, I like. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, overall, it's just to be better, right? Yeah, yeah. And one of the steps to one of the uh, one of the ways to confirm that you've gotten better is to work for a bigger company. Yeah, yeah. Or also, I think in a, in a way to complete the circle, because we like you talked, like we talked about, it, like yeah. these companies are the ones who kind of made us, inspired us to yeah. uh, like create. Exactly. So it would be yeah. great, like yeah, to work with them. Yeah, and like you know, company. to be in of, officially working on something. <laughs> right? I'm pretty much just a, a paid fan, <laughs> right? Yeah, but I want to like it would be good to be like more than that to like be a guest at a comic convention versus like okay can I go to Artist Alley here's my money <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah so do you want to plug anything or like uh, tell let people know where they can find your work uh, online and... yeah most of my stuff it's easiest on Instagram but I feel like mo the so I'll, I'll put the handle on the yeah. screen yeah yeah um, Paul underscore Limhenko um, and then oh is that how you pronounce it. Yeah. Is Lim Henko? Yeah, nobody. So it's not Genko. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, no. I was always like, oh, his it, name is for yeah. Lim Genko. If, if, if you knew how to pronounce it, I would think you were a stalker. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows how to pronounce my my uh, my last name. And I still remember mm. learning it. Anyway. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and then also an art station. And I'll give you... Yeah, go go here. <laughs> <laughs> Or um, go go to PKK and see like uh, yeah. you, know, you are yeah, you just there. go and meet the artists yeah and they'll find they, yeah. they'll find you yeah 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 um, that's the best place to see my stuff I think art station because um, it's on a bigger screen versus just on your phone okay I think. so yeah. uh, just to close up like do you have any like advice or any uh, um like kind of like wishes or for bkk and zine as like, because we are trying to become this yeah platform for artists and of course comics will play an important part in it yeah um i again we're trying to do this um you know we're not professionals like as, as yeah. people can see from mm -hmm. the interview <laughs> but you know we try our best and yeah. we try to um shout out to artists and yeah Hopefully one day artists will get paid for being featured in Big yeah. and that's my dream yeah. so that if one day an artist gets a lunch money from Big Eka and Zin because yeah. he's struggling or she's struggling, yeah. um, that would be, you know, great. So I don't know, any, yeah. any, I don't know, words well, to... Well, I think, <laughs> I think you said it, like you, you just got to uh, keep going at it and uh, in, in my opinion, because with BKK and Zine, everybody is submitting their own stuff. And because they're not professionals, they don't have to compromise what they're doing stylistically, yeah. right? Uh, I don't think they, they should be doing it be, because they're trying to uh, get get likes or whatever like that. Because you don't get likes on BKK and Zine, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to worry about impressing more people than the next person mm -hmm. or whatever, right? You can do as... You could do whatever you want and you don't have to worry about criticism because there's no comment section either, right? And so, like, I think when you don't have to worry about that, your actual style comes out. It's mm -hmm. like what you want to do and how you want to do it versus copying another person, right? You don't need to be like, okay, this person does it this way and I'm going to do it that way also. Yeah. You don't have to do that. You yeah. can just be like, I'm going to do this thing and I like the way that this person does it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it the way I wanna do it instead. Yeah. And I think that that way you'll be the first person mm -hmm. to do it that way. And yeah. people mostly remember the first person and not the second, third, or fourth person that does <laughs> yeah. it in a similar yeah. way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>